Sea shanties, what are they exactly? Now you might have heard, I mean I'm sure you have heard of sea shanties, uh, especially in the last few years, uh, but there has been quite some confusion as to what they actually are, which is fine, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need everyone to be an expert on folk music, but I, I think if you really are interested in sea shanties, you should know uh, a little bit more about what they are and uh, what, they, what they actually were in the past. Now, sea shanties are songs uh, sung by sailors, okay? I think everyone has got this one, <laughs> right? But then there is a wide variety of songs that might have been sung by sailors in the past. And also there is the question of when they were sung, by whom exactly. So there's a whole world of, of things you might want to know about sea shanties. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert, but I, but I have done my readings. Um, for example, today I'm going to quote this book. Uh, it's called uh, uh, Cello Song, and uh, it's a very nice book which I found in the uh, Maritime Museum in London. And it's probably the best book on sea shanties I have read so far. So there might be others, but this is just my uh, very limited experience. As to what are sea shanties, let's uh, be clear on one thing. There are many songs that are considered to be sea shanties, but an actual sea shanty is a song that was sung while working. Everything else is not a sea shanty. Also, there are some songs that were uh, sung by specific categories of workers, such as miners, for example, uh, but they are not sea shanties. Uh, they are work songs, that's, uh, that's clear, but they are not sea shanties for what? Well, there's no sea in there, <laughs> so it's quite obvious. Even though they are quite nice and they might resemble sea shanties as a you know, general um, genre. So, uh, sea shanties were sung by sailors. We got this one. Uh, when we sp when we talk about shanties, we are quite clearly speaking about English shanties. Um, there are walk songs, or, or actually sailor songs, from other cultures, uh, mostly European, in other languages. Uh, but as far as I know, um, most of these songs were either sung by uh, fishermen, for example that's very common, or songs that might be related to, uh, to, to seafaring, uh, but are not technically sea shanties. The, the shanty culture, as far as I know, is 99% uh, British, and you might say uh, American and Australian in a way. There are some shanties that quite plainly refer to either Australia is as, as, a, as a homeland or, or or the Northern Americas as as, you know, as a homeland. So these are a few um, a few variations on the theme, but they were mostly British, as far as I know. Now uh, I'm going to quote a little bit of this book, um, especially uh, to uh, kind of uh, bust some myths. I hate the expression, but it gives you the idea. Uh, first of all, the 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 word shantik may be spelled as C H anti or as S. H and he, mm, I like the SH better, uh, but it's uh, there's no standard, and uh, in any case, it probably comes from the old French chanter to, to sing, which then became to chant in, uh, in English and um, and then form the shanty, so the, the, a specific form of chant, if you wish. Why do people sing when they work? The ancient and universal practice, and I'm, I'm quoting this book, the ancient and universal practice seems to have two major benefits. Firstly, music rhythmic properties enable people to engage in group activities to coordinate their efforts and thus to deploy the available energy in a more efficient manner. Secondly, by providing access to a range of properties and effects not readily available in everyday life, such as harmony, melody, rhyme, rhythm, and so on, Singing boosts physical resilience and psychological well-being. Any tasks, any task requiring arduous and and or repetitive group activity, can probably be performed more efficiently to musical accompaniment. So that's the why, basically. So work harder, work better, and uh, enjoy it as as far as you can, which sits very well with commercial vessels with trade 
ships, which was where these songs were sung mostly. I know that most of people now um, think of sea shanties as something relating to pirates or whatever. The point is, we have no idea. I mean, pirates might have sung anything they used to sing back in the Navy or on land. Uh, there's no specific song that was uh, sung by pirates. And we do know that the Navy did not allow say, uh, singing shanties, with few exceptions. For example, it seems that a drunken sailor was allowed on the British Navy. The golden age of sea shanties were pro was probably... Uh, in the mid 1800s, uh, again I quote the the book. So a quarter century of international conflict on land and at sea ended with the Battle of Waterloo, 1815. After which the way opened for the expansion of global trade and travel. The shanty historian singer Stan Hugill identified 1818 as the moment of takeoff, for it was in that year that an American shipping company named the Black Ball Line com commenced a regular run between New York and Liverpool, sailing on the first of each month, irrespective of the weather or amount of cargo loaded. Yes, we're in the, in the mid-1800s. The ships are still, well, sail-based, so there's no steam rollers, and this means lots of uh, manual labor and long trips to get to the Americas, and a little specialized crew, and uh, no strict rule as in the, um, as in the Navy vessels. Uh, all these factors together might have created the sea shanty culture, and surely they did create a kind of golden era for sea shanties. It seems, again, quoting, incidentally, that Anglophone's shanty singing was restricted by and large to merchant vessels. The Royal Navy and United States Navy operated according to a different system in which efficiency and discipline were based on the strict observation of a specialized system of signals, codes, and protocols. What's a shanty, actually, um, in musical terms? Well, a shanty is a song which is almost often sung by two different uh, groups of people, so to speak. There's the shantyman, which is the soloist, and the shantyman was also kind of an officer, if you wish, on the ship. So his role was official. And then you have the choir, which is anyone, all, all, the, all the deck hands, anyone working on that very specific task. And the fact that the, so, that the soloist, the, the shantyman, and the, the rest of the crew were uh, singing this kind of, um, you know, um, line and reply rhythm, allowed people to uh, coordinate on the same rhythm, which was set by the soloist, of course, so uh, something that had to be done quickly had a quicker song, some task that had to be slower had a slower song, and that was all up to the shantyman, this kind of uh, musician uh, with officer. This is what constitutes a sea shanty. There are many songs that are very famous, very popular. I quote one, for example, The, the Wellerman, the Wellerman is not a sea shanty. The Wellerman is a forecastle song, which means a song sung for entertainment, so after work, which still qualifies as a song sung by sailors, but it's not a sea shanty technically. But then, of course, you don't only have sea shanties and forecastle songs, you also have different sea shanties. Um, again, quoting from the book, the capstan song and the whole year song, that was the two main times you have. The capstan song was divided into A, the windlass or anchor capstan shanty, B, the capstan song sung when doing a job work other than heaving the anchor. The whole year shanty used for hoisting sails was subdivided into A, long poles, B, four sheeters, C, bunt towers. For pumping, it was considered any old sea song would do, so long as it had a good grand chorus. So, again, you see, there are songs that are specific for a task because they have a specific rhythm. And then there are songs like the pumping songs, which did not need a specific rhythm because it's an activity in which you do not need to coordinate. When you heave or you hold, you have to be all together at the same time. Um, with the pumps, they just had to, you know, turn this kind of great wheel and um, 
and go for it <laughs> continuously. So it had to be more heartwarming than actually uh, specifically made for that task. Capstan song, we mentioned that before, are associated with heaving. For example, by pushing at the bars, which turned a mushroom-shaped winch in order to raise the anchor. I don't pretend I understand any of this. Uh, <laughs> I know a bit about sailing. I am confused as you, as you are, probably. Again, the monotonous task of pumping beach water from these leaky wooden vessels was the most unpopular shipboard task, and it too developed its own particular canon of work songs. Then, holier songs were associated with pulling, aka hauling ropes in order to raise heavy sails. One could, for example, pull in one continuous motion, pull intermittently, pull hand over hand, this, this kind of thing, hand over hand, or turn around and walk away from the pulled object, which is, you know, like, 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 like pulling like this way, you know, with something on, on, your, on your shoulder. To this day, there is no strict final taxonomy for all the different kinds of shipboard work song. Also because, of course, you are uh, because we don't know, because sailors were kind of writing down their repertoire as musicians do today. Quoting from the book, singing was one of the principal forms of free entertainment available in a predominantly oral culture. Besides the extensive canal of work songs, 19th century merchant seamen were also evidently fond of singing when off duty. These songs were sung at the bits, large wooden cleats to which ropes were attached towards the front of the ship. Hence, they were commonly known as forbiters, or main hatch songs on American vests. The predominant form was the ballad, a narrative in which the structure and melody of each verse is repeated throughout. Many genres were popular, however, composed love songs of the period, traditional drinking songs, music hall hits, and so on. Many accounts exist of singing sessions, with each off-duty sailor being called on to make a contribution and a good deal of time and thought has been devoted to understanding the relationship between the four bitters and the shanty proper. So now we have an understanding of what the shanty is and what it's not, more or less. And I have to point out uh, that uh, most of these were work songs, most of these songs originated or were popular in the 18th century. Uh, even though there are some of these songs which are supposedly much older, I think there is one theory that, for example, Santiano uh, stems out of the uh, late 17th century or somewhere like that. So it depends, really. And um, all we know is that some of these songs were recorded with the earliest... Um, what was it? The, the, the gramophones? Yes, those big things with the discs. Writing them wasn't very popular, especially not writing the tune. Um, these people, the sailors, would not have been expert musicians capable of writing down a tune as we would do today, you know, like, like with shit music. And, um, and so very much of this is actually guesswork, especially when we, when we have to deal with tunings. I, I like this book because it's very, it's very um, honest about this. And uh, it says, well, most of the people were kind of, you know, if they actually were in tune, it was already a miracle. I mean, the shanty man could sing, of course, but as for the rest of the crew members, uh, who knows? You know, <laughs> I would have been a terrible singer, for example. And um, the style of them is, of course, it, it might have changed throughout time. And it was basically whatever it was sung on land, because these people were not born on ships, you know, they, they grew there, <laughs> but uh, they still remember the songs from their earlier days. This uh, book is a very interesting chapter called In Search of Authentic, which basically tells you that they, um, they don't know much. Um, melodies are a fine jumble of pentatonic phrases that may have derived originally from Gaelic or African culture, modal formulas from English countryside, and more than commonplaces from stage hits of the first half of Victoria's reign. So, um, a lot of stuff mixed up together. And as for the tuning, so to speak, uh, they made it clear that they have everything in like C major or C minor, just for the sake of simplicity, because we don't know. We have no idea if they ever were in tune consistently, if they had any idea of what, you know, a key 
meant. So I hope you enjoyed this first video. It's I, I try to go a bit more in depth than your average YouTuber or, or, or blog article. Uh, let me know in the comments if you would like more information because this thing is uh, chock full of information on sea shanties. And uh, if you have any specific questions that might help you uh, understand.